Hey guys, welcome to my Beard of Dragon build. Uh, it's going to be a built-in. It's a 900 long, 600 high, 450 deep. Um, this is for uh, a lady and her husband. They've got a bit of dragon. They um, brought the tank down to me, and I'm going to show you guys how to, or how I do, my built-in enclosures. So stick around. I'll do a tear down of the tank because I had to remove the tops and uh, the sides. Um, it's my first video. Going to be a lot of time lapses. I'm not a very big camera fan, so. Um, Hopefully you learn something. Um, after it's all finished, we're gonna cut it with the airbrush. So I'll do step by step along the way, and yeah, hopefully it goes well. Basking spot laid out. We've got a bit of a layer going around the back there. I will turn this onto its side and onto its back and do the entire back of this as well, but the expander foam won't stand up on its own. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it at the moment. Top's all clear, full access, sides all clear, full access. There was a mesh there on this side that I'm gonna have to try and avoid. Um, and we'll see what we do with this cable opening. We may get rid of it, we may not, I'm not sure yet, so we'll just see what happens. And also just to help the expansion, it is quite hot today, so to help the expansion of the foam so that the outer layer doesn't dry before the inside, now what that will do is cause a massive cavity. Um, so what I do is, I, as per instructions, it says mist before and after installation, that allows the outer skins to stay moist and the inside to expand to maximum density. So if you don't do that, you will end up having holes when you start carving and you will have to fill them up later. All right, here it is. Let me see how much the uh, expanding foam has done its job. Now it's still spongy because it's still drying. Um, it's only been a few hours after I actually did it. Um, so yeah, I'll set this up now and I'm gonna flip this thing over and do uh, do the back wall. So come along. still it's only been probably another hour and a half or so again spongy still but you can see just how much that that has expanded so I'm gonna flip this back up um, and start addressing this panel here this side here I'm not gonna do anything else with it I'll cut that back out of the tracks um, because I do have that piece of mesh that I was talking about before that has to go back in. So at this stage, looking like I'm probably gonna end up leaving this. Um, just makes it easier later. I don't have to try and um, just try and cover it up on the outside. You gotta fill it in, cover it up. It's just turned into a bit of a nightmare. So um, not to say you can't block them off. You've just gotta take them out, allow the foam to run out through them carve them off on the outside and then dress the glass like I'll show you later when we get to that. Right, here it is. That's uh, 
all still the same day as what it was before. Uh, it's now like seven o'clock and these were done at what, nine o'clock in the morning. This, uh, it's just about ready for carving. I'm not gonna touch it tonight though. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Uh, just in case there is any big spots or anything like that that need to dry more. But as you can see, it has a lot of expansion. Uh, I'm gonna cut back like probably three quarters of this, but the way I see it is that if you've got more, then you can um, cut back more. If you don't have it, then it's harder to add it in later. Update. So I'm gonna just start trimming this up. I got a little bit of time before um, before I should go to bed, but um, I'm just gonna start trimming up around the tops of this, around the light, just starting to get a little bit of shape to it. Um, I don't know, so stick around, watch it in a bit of a time lapse and yeah. phone died last night um, I was gonna do a talk through of this I had a bit of a blowout that I shouldn't have um, I shouldn't have started carving last night I, I knew I shouldn't have but gives me an opportunity to show you what can happen I was gonna show you exactly what was gonna happen last night um, but I've now patched it and um, you can see there just this blob here and this blob in the corner here now essentially what had happened is um, as I started cutting through here, things started getting a bit tacky. <clears throat> um, and that just means that, yeah, I didn't leave it long enough and everything was still wet inside. Now, I did then find another hole down in this corner here. So essentially nothing was dry properly behind and the entire thing behind there and here was um, just hollow. So I've now punched the expand foam back inside it, pumped it right up, let it dry overnight, and um, yeah, should be able to start carving properly later today. And um, yeah, I'll set you back up and do a um, do another time lapse for it. And as you can see, there's a lot of mess, like this whole bottom here is full, but um, I haven't even got into the messy part yet. Once I start using the Dremel, then it'll get messy. So um, stick with me, see how it goes. This is it. It's um, just all carved out. Pretty much gonna be ready to start coating soon. I'm gonna mask everything up. Um, you probably noticed that I took um, took this big chunk off on this side. Um, now that's purely because 
the heat and UV and everything is on the inside of the tank and I was a little bit worried that that was going to hit it. Um, so you know, I've taken that chunk out, it does give that nice big ledge over there that you know, if, the, if it wants to get up here and, and sit on there at least it's got a chance to get up considering that we've taken a lot of its actual ground space out of it. Um, and I also did the same in this corner down here just to give that uh, a bit more room. Maybe put the water bowl or something in this corner. So we'll um, probably, not sure about if I'll do it on camera or off camera, but I do have to go through now and mask up everywhere. Um, otherwise the coatings and stuff that we put on will make an absolute mess. Um, you can see I've got a box and a bucket plus a bit on the bench of rubbish. And you obviously saw all of that bloody tiny little flaky stuff that comes off of the Dremel. Um, now with the Dremel, and I'm quite sweaty. <laughs> with the Dremel, um, I use this little one. That one there is just for when I was bulking out. And then I've got this pointed arrowhead one. And that's for all of your crevices and things like that. Um, I did go a little bit softer on the crevices in this one just because it was built in a fair bit and it was a bit more hard to get into so um, either way still going to have the same effect. All right here it is all masked up now you simply just follow follow your foam around you can stay a little bit outside it so that the coating will go onto the glass slightly um, you can try and cut it back later and make it a bit neater so but make sure that every bit of your black is covered around anywhere that you are putting your coating, otherwise you will not get it off very easily. I've also followed the inside tape on the outside so that when I do the outside coating on both sides, um, it follows the internal perfectly and will cover all this foam because you don't want any of that being seen from the outside. So I'll just give you a quick close up of everything here. And this is ready for um, coating. Now you'll also see I've left these chunks here, there, and there. They don't look appealing, so you've got to try and blend them in a little bit. Um, they're simply because the top mesh clips into those lips. So you want to make sure that your foam, or your, your coating and stuff doesn't get up underneath this lip because you won't have it to clip in later. So there it is, ready to go. All right, guys, I'm going to start coating this. Um, I'm using, I'll put a photo up there, but I'm using a Dunlop um, tile, roof tile pointing. Uh, it dries super hard. It is waterproof, so you can use it in waterfall applications, not something specifically that's uh, like an aquarium sort of style, um, but definitely for bioactive or waterfalls, this will be pretty good it's pretty well uh solid in all aspects so uh can withstand the heat very well and pretty easy to apply now first coat you want to make it a little bit watery uh so from this pointing it is a pre-mixed so just add a little bit of water stir it in pretty good and then um i'm actually going to be just playing around with a little bit of oxides and stuff i've never used this product before i've done a little test rock just to get an idea of how it worked, um, but I'm going to just uh, put a little bit of oxide. This stuff, if you've ever used oxide with grout, you've got to put a fair bit in to get it to change the color. This stuff here is very, very, very minimal amount and it changes the color dramatically. So um, yeah, bear with me while I mix some stuff up and then I'll put you on a time lapse and uh, you can watch it come, come into play. So yeah. Now, without tipping this out, I'll try and show you, but this is sort of the consistency you're going for. It should just flow off and you should be able to paint it on pretty easily with a brush. Now, that's standard color. That's the sand pointing. Um, I'm gonna add a touch of oxide to it now and show you what a little tiny bit of oxide can really do. All right, there's the oxide. You can see it's not a lot in there. 
I'll give it a stir up. Just using a spatula to stir this. The more oxide you put in, the more dominant the colour of the oxide will come out in the uh, in the coating. So the more you put in, the darker and more dominant the colour is going to be. Uh, mixing it into a sand base is <clears throat> it's a lighter option. Um, if you mix it into a a black base or a darker base your color might come a bit darker i'm not sure but you can see there that was a tiny little bit of oxide and it's pretty uh pretty dramatic the color change so we'll uh, start putting it on just with a brush simple cheap brush from bunnings and simply brush it on it's very messy so you can see why everything has been taped up By no means is the first coat beautiful. Don't worry about any spots that haven't really filled in correctly or anything like that. It's simply think of it as a priming layer as such. Um, making sure you get every surface covered if you wanted to, which I will be doing, is all these tiny little holes as the coats progress and they get thicker, those holes will get filled. You've probably noticed in the video, I went back through some of the corners and just filled in some of the really big stuff. Um, while this is runny, you can't, um, you can't fill it in properly. It's literally just a matter of getting a coat on it. Time for coat number two. Um, now the next morning, first coat, dried pretty quickly there is some spots that are a bit soft up should be all right still as you can see sounds nice and hard got my second batch mixed up we're pretty much the consistency of cake batter i suppose um i am wearing gloves today for anyone who calls me out on that um yeah, well, this time around we're going to go on a bit thicker and hopefully try and fill a bit more of those holes. second coat done almost what I've done I've washed the brush out um, and now it's a little bit damp it's not like wet wet um, and I'm simply just going to go over the entire thing and smooth out dab all the paint lines out things like that um, you don't have to do it in every every coat I prefer to especially digging out some of the crevices you tend to lose a fair bit of detail if you go too heavy inside the crevices, but you have to go heavy to get it, get the actual material in there. So I generally just go with the back of the brush um, and just scrape out that excess, dab all the, the outsides, and um, yeah, I do that as your coat start getting thicker. The 
still sections that aren't perfect. Um, you know, you're still getting little tiny holes. Uh, you know, holes like like this sort of here. Yeah, you guys can keep that sort of stuff if you want to. Um, I'm not a massive fan, especially for a dragon enclosure. Um, purely because the crickets tend to find tiny little sections and they'll just burrow. So I like to try and fill all these little holes just to avoid anything getting in behind the wall. After second coat, um, it will be pretty hard, but don't be fooled. Um, it will still be spongy. So the more coats, the better. So just keep pushing through. Do three, do four if you feel it needs it. The thicker you go, the longer it takes to dry. <clears throat> There's a chance that the section behind hasn't dried. So just be patient. Here it is, three coats. Now I didn't film the entire thing this time because the video would take too long. It's basically the exact same thing as last time. The only difference is I gave the whole tub a full stir up and just used it straight out of the tub. I didn't do any other water and just added the color and that was it. It's a thicker coat. Um, and then again, I went through and took out all the crevices, added in some detail around the rocks, got the layering stuff right through there. Really sharpen up those edges and give it a bit better of a feel. It's a quick look at what I do on the external. It's a uh, sandstone pond sealer mixed with oxide. Um, I recommend using a little bit of water, mix it with the oxide, then adding it to the sandstone sealer and then just painting it on and then just shape and cut around each stone to get it to look neat. Righto, time has come, everything's dry. It's um, rock solid. So I changed the way I was doing it a little bit. I wanted to try something different. So I went and bought myself an airbrush. Um, to me, it gives a softer blend. Now, you can do it with what they call a uh, dry brush technique, which is simply using as little paint on your brush as possible and simply dusting over the sections that you want. It can be tricky to do. Um, in saying that, this airbrush has taken me a bit to get used to. Uh, it's still not perfect. Have a play with it see what you like um, you'll also see that I'll do a aging wash there's a lot of people out there that do it before and there's a lot of people out there who don't do it um, I like to do it after all of my colors been put in uh, I find it a bit more natural being that rocks are naturally colored and then the black over the top uh, is like what happens in nature where the rocks start going dark with moisture and all that sort of stuff so we're going to try and give it a nice blend from top to bottom uh, being darker towards the bottom and a lot lighter up the top where the sun would be baking everything here's my arsenal of paints i'll put an actual photo up set you up and you can see kind of see hopefully you can see i don't have a tripod or anything set up yet so i just jam you in the cupboard over there and Now, every time I change my camera, it changes the color. But um, 
You can see there the bottom, down the bottom here. It was a lot darker as it starts to fade up through here and it gets lighter and lighter towards the top. Now, all inside, you want to make sure you get inside your crevices and stuff darker. All up through here, you make sure that's all dark so that it really makes those rocks pop. See how it dries tomorrow morning and I might show you guys what I do uh, when I say a black wash. Just gonna do a quick aging wash on the bottom rocks here. Just these three stacked ones, just to try and get a bit of a depth change, color change. Now simply black paint in a spray bottle and we're just gonna spray it into the areas that we think water is gonna sit. We'll run down the front. I'm not too concerned about down the front because it's um, it's all just substrate down there anyway. One thing to remember, this does go on and it looks pretty dark as you're doing it. Don't be alarmed, it will the water will dry up, it will run away, it won't look as heavy. Uh, the black will just sit in the crevices, it'll sit in areas that would have naturally aged. Alright guys, there it is. It's all finished. Um, it's not an easy task doing this. Like. If you've got a bit of creativity and a bit of knowledge of um, how things should look, um, you sh you'll be all right. Now, in saying that, I didn't know how to do it. I asked around, I did research, I had a crack at it, and by no means is what I do perfect. But nature isn't perfect. Don't go too crazy thinking it needs to look absolutely 100% perfect. Uh, it doesn't give it a crack hope this video helped you um, follow my page on Facebook cams custom backgrounds and hit that subscribe button and I'll be trying to post every build that I do stick around hopefully you've learned something else and yeah thanks for watching